This is a deep dive on the Hyundai Ioniq 6. Price, power, design, driving dynamics, range, tech, charging speed, starting. <laughs> the police are coming. One moment. Right after I talked to this officer about ignoring the no trespassing signs. We all remember when this was the very symbol for cheap and cheerful. If that budget brand perception wasn't vanquished from your brain five years ago, Ionic 6 should make it clear Hyundai is a world-class automaker. As a group, it's now the world's third largest vehicle manufacturer. The 6 isn't just an Ionic 5 with Bionic Dolphin design. It has some new tech under its swoopy skin. I'm in Phoenix, Arizona for the press launch. Hyundai doesn't build cookie cutter cars. They don't build the designs uh, to look all the same. We're not looking for a family of identical looking vehicles. The designers really want to start with the customer and what the customer lifestyle and values are. There's quite a price spread when it comes to the Ionic 6. Go with the base model, rear wheel drive with the standard range pack, which is 53 kilowatt hours, and the sticker price is $42,700. This happens to be a top trim limited model, the long range pack, which is 77.4 kilowatt hours, and dual motor all wheel drive. This one goes for $57,400. Not a bad deal when you consider a lot of people think this looks like a million bucks. Maybe two. The six does not qualify for federal tax credits. Check with your state. Uh, let's start with design since it's going to be polarizing. Hyundai persistently calls this a streamliner, not a sedan. In person, it's a striking piece of future retro sculpture with echoes of the original Mercedes CLS. This touch of Porsche 911 turbo adds functional aerodynamics. The coefficient of drag is as low as 0.22 among the best in the biz. There are active grille shutters up front. Look past the curves, swoops, and arcs, and there are hundreds, if not thousands of squares that Hyundai calls pixels, and from different angles, they morph shape. The four here telegraph different functions when switching modes and when going from drive to reverse. They can indicate state of charge, too. And four dots represents the letter H in Morse code. The shape of the six won't be everyone's cup of tea, but the details are impressive, and clearly the design team had a lot of fun with it. Like the Ionic 5, I'm lukewarm on the flush door handles. All sixes get a two-tone treatment. Uh, why call this paint transmission blue when it's gray? Well, in bright sunlight, look close, there's flecks of cobalt. Neat stuff. Ionic 6 rides on the same EGMP platform as Ionic 5, Kia EV6, and Genesis GV60. New refinements extend range. The SE with the big battery is EPA rated at 361 miles. The pack has 7% higher density. There are more efficient motors, and the inverter adds 5% efficiency. The $3,500 all-wheel drive system can fully disengage the front motor basically a complete disconnect of the front wheels to the motor relationship. So it all any kind of parasitic drag is eliminated and the effect is a range increase of 6%. The all-wheel drive limited that I'm driving makes 320 horsepower and 446 pound-feet of torque to move this 4,600 pound vehicle. Ionic 5 owners will recognize the graphics which are configurable. Uh, no head-up display though, dang. The single-speed transmission is controlled here, freeing up space on the console. The Limited has adjustable performance tones. Drive modes are easy to select. They clearly change the car's dynamics, by the way. Recuperation drag can be reduced here and increased here. I like the charge port near the driver's door. That's personal preference. Electric Vehicle 101, the rear drive single motor version will get you more range. This dual motor will give you more power, but still 270 miles of rated range. That is not bad. The six silently rushes to 60 miles an hour in under five seconds, easy. If you want to go faster, maybe there'll be an Ionic 6N. Hyundai hasn't said anything, but that's just gotta happen.
And Hyundai's sister brand, Kia, has the EV6 GT, so you gotta figure some of the work has been done already. As it stands, this is no slouch, a good balance of athletics and luxury. This is kind of fun to chuck into a corner, low center of gravity with the batteries in the floor and all. The Ionic 6 has its suspension calibrated a little bit more for sport. The Ionic 5, if you remember, is really tuned more for comfort. Like any EV, the heft is felt pushing hard into corners. Steering weight changes with the drive mode. There's some road feel, uh, not gobs. With a rated range of 270 miles or as high as 361 with rear wheel drive, the 6 could be a travel machine. I'll tell you, this car would be a great cruiser. It's quiet, it's comfortable. The only noise you really hear is a little bit of wind off the A-pillars, and it's very subtle. Set a destination in the Navi system, and charging stations plus their status are mapped out, and it preconditions the pack when a station is selected. Everybody wants to know range, and the EPA rates this at 270 miles. As near as I can tell, I'm getting that, maybe even a little bit better, but you have to remember, conditions are ideal. I've been averaging about 60 miles an hour and temperatures are in the mid 70s. That's with limited time. I'm hoping to snag one soon for a thorough range test. Back the regen off all the way, and this will coast for miles. Dial it all the way in for one pedal driving, There you go, didn't even touch the brake pedal. The EGMP architecture promises quick charging on the road, second only to Lucid and Porsche. Charging with 800 volts, 18 minutes from 10 to 80% is very impressive. So 800 volts is the latest systems. The other, the other legacy system, which actually are the majority right now, of 400 volts, also quite fast. And this vehicle will determine which one it's getting power from. And for your home charger, if you have a level two, seven hours, that's great. And like Ionic 5, it has vehicle to load ability. With this accessory, which goes right in the, in the charge port here, you can pull electricity out of the battery. There's also on the limited, there's an outlet inside the vehicle here. It's about the same as a, as a wall socket in your home. If you're going camping for a few days and you're using it, you can set the discharging limit so you'll have enough power left so it's just not going to drain down your battery so you can drive home. At our lunch stop, this one with the 18-inch wheels that improve Ionic 6's range was powering this refrigerated cart serving mocktails. Uh, didn't have one. The interior is fashion forward too. Many materials are made sustainably. The carpet uses recycled fishing nets. Last year's Diet Coke bottle might be along for the ride. Maybe a silk purse can be made out of a sow's ear. These surfaces are luxury car grade. Uh, check this out. It's translucent, a touch that's new to me. Window and lock controls are here. In other markets, these winglets get screens. Rear view camera systems aren't approved in the US yet. We stick with mirrors. Uh, look, more pixels. No buttons on the doors. Effectively, this ridge is one long grab handle and there's LED lighting at the bottom of it. In the daylight, it's not all that noticeable, but in the evening, it's a show that impresses. Choose your hue, uh, different colors can be assigned to different zones. In other words, it can be as tasteful or as gaudy as you like. All but the base model seats are covered in h techs the synthetic stuff. Uh, Limited's chairs are not overly adjustable, but they're comfy, heated, and vented. The wheel is leather and heated. This is the largest sunroof available, and the eight-speaker Bose sound system is serviceable. A car this striking deserves better. If you've been in Ionic 5, the user interface will look familiar. There are some upgrades, like the charger routing with battery preconditioning, and Ionic 6 is the first eGMP car to get full over-the-air update ability. I didn't have time to explore the quality of the voice commands. There are the hard controls that you'd want for easy access. All but the base standard range 6 get a heat pump, by the way. With all this style, tech, and Qi phone charging, you'll still be plugging in to use Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. I've heard five different reasons why it's not wireless. None of them are reasonable. 
I'm five foot nine, and even with the sloping roof line, getting in isn't too hard for me. Headroom, uh, it's about average, but knee, leg, and foot room, very generous. Better than Polestar 2 and Tesla Model 3. Uh, cushions are high enough so that thigh support is good, and door openings big enough so that car seats go in and out no problem. There's storage in the doors, here and up here. Pockets on both seat backs, yes. No separate climate zone, though. Uh, I can charge my phones up. Heated seats back here, no, and not available. Kind of surprising. The floor is completely flat, which improves foot room if you've got three adults back here. And you know what? A trio would be okay, just so long as they're not too big or tall in the torso. If it's a long trip, yeah, keep it to two. Hyundai's suite of active electronic safety tech, or ADAS, has been improved. For example, um, we've added corner radar and uh, front and rear um, so that the vehicle, in cases of actuating the forward collision avoidance sensors, that the vehicle can actually steer away from trouble. And it can know whether there's a car in the space it needs to steer towards. Digital Key 2 allows owners to text a key to family and friends. It supports Samsung Android phones and now Apple iOS and Watch. So you don't need the key, but hey, even the physical one looks cool. And while other automakers are moving to subscriptions for using digital functions like using the app to check charge rate and precondition the cabin before driving off, many of the Blue Link features will be free for the life of the car, some transfer to a new owner. Hyundai execs say the company is looking at selling new features like new performance sounds. So that's reasonable. The sleek silhouette of the Ionic 6 makes it look like a useful hatchback. It's not. It's a true sedan, so it's not going to be as handy as the Ionic 5. There's room for the tire repair kit and a mobile charge cord. No spare, no straps or pockets to keep things from rolling around either. Remote releases are good. Uh, either push the seat back down with the long thing that you're loading or walk around to the back door to drop them. While Model 3 and Polestar 2 are shorter in overall length, both offer more storage in the boot. Polestar by around three cubic feet, the Tesla a significant eight. The Hyundai offers up a smallish 11.2 cubes, which is good for four carry-on suitcases. And Elon's car has front storage. Uh, this does not, really. Hyundai's engineers wanted a more spacious open cabin, and the 6's interior is roomier, especially for those long of leg. Time for red light, green light. Green light. The slippery streamliner shape belongs in the permanent collection of MoMA or the Pompidou. The spacious cabin is fashion forward too, all but the base SE get the lovely ambient lighting. The long-range rear-drive model is rated at 361 miles and is priced at around $46,600. The improved 800-volt eGMP charging architecture holds the promise of easier road trips. Yellow lights? DC fast charging depends on finding high-powered terminals <laughs> that are working. A car this dramatic deserves a panoramic glass roof, heads-up display, and top-shelf sound system. Rear seating is roomy in most regards, but tall friends wanting a toasty butt must ride in front. Red light. A vehicle this advanced should have wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, though Tesla doesn't offer any iteration. The aero efficiency means asking friends to borrow their pickup or SUV on a regular basis. No federal tax credit, and I can't even imagine the markup over retail. Walkers in this very nice neighborhood that I was kicked out of while shooting this car gushed about the styling, and I'm always happy to see automakers take a chance and make good on a daring design. It's about as close to the prophecy concept car as a production vehicle can get, considering governmental requirements and regulations for safety, plus, you know, people need to be able to sit in it too. If you're shopping for an electric car and the Ionic 6 is not on your list, this definitely should be test-driven. Um, it's quite different from the Ionic 5. It's comfortable, it's quiet, it's got loads of tech, it looks great. It's kind of a game changer. Hyundai isn't just competitive these days, it's become a leader in the automotive space. A lot of automakers will be looking over their shoulders at the Ionic 6, even if it's just to gaze at the streamliner design. 
I will note that I didn't ever say sixy, you know? Just saying. Interesting that Hyundai brought this out instead of a three-row crossover like Kia is doing with the EV9. SUVs are what people want these days, uh, but considering the limited supply of chips and batteries, I suppose it's a moot point. Hyundai can't keep up with demand as it is. And besides, it has a three-row SUV EV waiting in the wings, the Ionic 7. It's important to hammer home that charging speed depends on so many factors and that it's not important to everyone. If you seldom, if ever, road trip and you juice up at home, it's less of a benefit. Tesla continues to have the best charging infrastructure, but as it opens up the supercharger network to everyone, that's going to be less of an issue. Before I go, uh, let's talk design one last time. I get that people out there will not like the robot flipper look. And, you know, people like what they like, right? Personally, I think this is a brilliant design, especially when you start drilling down into the details. And one thing that I've learned over all these years is that you really need to see a car in person before you judge. There have been plenty of times when I've seen a car in a photograph and thought, oh my God, what a hot mess that is, and then seen it in person and completely understood what the stylists were doing and vice versa. So do that before you judge this, okay? It's pretty cool in person. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe to my channel, click notifications, follow me on social media. If you have a question, leave it in the comments. And if you want to tip your favorite automotive writer, you can do it with super thanks and Venmo. That's Driven. I'm Tom Volk.